Subpoenas, the one thing Democrats are producing faster than 2020 candidates. I swear, they're handing them out like candy on Halloween. More than 100 subpoenas have been issued, leading to the only time anyone's ever felt bad for Steve Bannon. He's one of the few people from the Trump campaign who hasn't been subpoenaed yet. Hey, don't worry, buddy. You played an important role in that campaign in your own special way. Now, the Trump administration has vowed to fight all subpoenas, which has recently come to a head and maybe the most on the nose named court case I have ever seen. Specifically, Donald J. Trump v. the Committee on Oversight and Reform of the U.S. House of Representatives. We're talking about a face off between two branches of government here. Get me some popcorn and set my phone to do not disturb because, oh, it's going down. I mean, this case could almost be called a movable object v. unstoppable force. The question here was whether Donald Trump had to follow a subpoena over specific financial data of his. And the answer to this question? Well, the decision was released today and its interpretation varies wildly based on who's reading it. The federal judge is ordering President Trump to turn over his financial records to Congress. The ruling is in response to a power play by the president to deflect investigations led by congressional Democrats. According to this ruling, the subpoena stands and Trump has to turn over his financial records. But if you pop open the hood and ignore all the outdated mechanisms and oil that probably should have been replaced years ago, you'll see that this ruling is actually not a victory for an investigation of Trump. You see, Congress is constrained in the same way most of us are. Mm, if you're going to use company time and resources to launch an investigation, it better be relevant to one of your jobs, creating laws or impeachment. Now, most of you are saying, well, because it's an investigation into the president's personal finances, it's probably more of an impeachment thing. But well, Congress hasn't filed for impeachment, so you can't play that card yet. So what? You're telling me Congress won access to Donald Trump's personal finances by saying they wanted to create a new law? Um, hey, we're writing a law about presidential corruption, and we think you might be a corrupt president. Can we please take down your info so we can make whatever you did illegal in the future? That would be ridiculous. The judge earlier ruled the president and his accountants must comply with the House request, saying there were valid legislative purposes for the subpoena. Okay, well, the sarcastic straw man version of myself stands corrected. Legislative purposes means using this new information to create laws. So what laws might we be getting? Well, to quote the decision, according to the Oversight Committee, it believes that the requested records will aid its consideration of strengthening ethics and disclosure laws, as well as amending the penalties for violating such laws. So like exactly what I said earlier, except without my voice dripping with sarcasm. Oh man, this stuff is hilarious. Before I move on, there is one other side reason for this subpoena that is equally valid, yet incredibly specific to this one case. I want to use an entire second sentence to emphasize that the legislative reason we just talked about is the justification for all subpoenas issued. But the second reason I'm about to go into is only relevant to this case. The Emoluments Clause. A constitutional clause where, already in just saying the title, we're breaking into SAT vocab territory. The Emoluments Clause of the Constitution says that no person holding any office of profit or trust under them shall, without the consent of Congress, accept any present, emolument, office, or title of any kind whatsoever from any king, prince, or foreign state. Now, because Congress got a shout out in the part, they're approvers of gifts. So they can say they need these records to check in and see if the president is getting gifts from foreign countries. Trump has been sued a few times in the past for potentially violating this clause. But the accusations are a lot more specific than you might think. They believe that because President Trump did not divest entirely from his assets, he's still actually the, um, the ultimate beneficiary of the monies that are spent at his hotels, um, frankly around the world, but as well as in, Wa but also in Washington DC. This specifically revolves around whether people spending money to stay at a hotel Trump owns gives Trump money. 
Only Congress would need to spend more than one minute figuring out the answer to that question. I mean, I know Trump had some failed businesses, but I think we can agree that he's a competent enough businessman that if you stay at his hotel, the hotel makes money without needing proof of documentation. Now there are a few problems with citing emoluments rather than, oh, the great laws we're going to make based on this information. The main reason is, well, the vast, vast majority of the documents requested have absolutely nothing to do with hotels or even making profits. Take it from NBC reporter and man who's so excited about this ruling, he might undermine it. The judge traced the committee's interest in those documents in detail, beginning with who else? Stormy Daniels. The judge noted that the committee was seeking, quote, documents related to President Trump's reporting of debts and payments to his personal attorney, Michael Cohen, to silence women alleging extramarital affairs with the president before the election. The judge went on to list several other financial matters of legitimate interest to the committee. That's great for edits we're going to make to the current disclosure laws we have governing the president, but that sounded like a lot of things unrelated to emoluments. That's right, we're going to use this information to make a law against taking hundreds of thousands in campaign funds from one person and using it to pay hush money to a porn star. Oh wait, I'm being told that pretty much everything I just said is already very illegal. Well, we're going to make a second law to really just hammer that point home. Because of this, the majority of the argument was about what exactly this information was going to be used for. Now, I'm definitely making fun of this because, well, it's pretty funny, but I could see the potential for some important changes to disclosure laws that you can figure out based on looking at the financial statements of the first ever businessman turned president with no previous political experience. The argument that will support Trump are, well, if you listen to the news, chances are you've heard them. Democrats want those records because they're investigating whether the president committed financial crimes before taking office. Uh, you do realize that that's what your side is trying to convince the judge isn't happening here, right? Here's the decision's clarification of Trump's defense. Chairman Cummings admitted that the Mazar subpoena was intended to investigate whether the president may have engaged in illegal conduct before and during his tenure in office. Now, Donald Trump's administration presented a ton of circumstantial evidence like this. For example, a November 2018 Vox article that quotes Chairman Cummings as saying, We've got to address this issue of exposing President Trump and what he has done. Now, there was a ton of this between quotes and evidence in this decision from across the last two years that were laid out to convince the judge of what most people already figured out. Yeah, maybe this isn't all about creating better laws. So what did the judge have to say? He said, legislation could stem from the Oversight Committee's investigation of the president's personal and corporate finances and the possible conflicts of interest under which he is operating. Thus, the potential presence of some intent to ridicule, harass, or punish the president cannot overcome this facially valid legislative purpose. Basically, in going over the finances of President Trump, the House Oversight Committee could have a light bulb moment where they think up a piece of new legislation. So therefore, they should be able to get access to the record citing legislative purposes. Wow, this sort of legislative purpose argument is spanning across the subpoena board right now. Take for example this separate report on the Trump tax return fight, done by the Daily Mail who apparently were testing out the new glaucoma simulation camera lens. In yet another act of resistance against congressional Democrats, the Trump administration on Friday defied a subpoena seeking years of President Donald Trump's tax returns. But in a letter to the committee Friday, Mnuchin reiterated an earlier claim that there was no legitimate legislative purpose in the Democrats' request. So this leads us to a final question. What happens to this information once it is handed over to Congress? Because let's just say hypothetically, Congress is interested in investigating the president a little more than making edits to our current disclosure laws. I know, hard to picture, right? But the court's recent decision says the court is not naive to reality. A reality confirmed by the fact that the Oversight Committee has said that the decision whether to make the records public lies within its discretion.
Thus, there is a chance that some records obtained from Mazas will become public soon after they are produced. You know, for legislative purposes. This section was acknowledging a separate Trump administration argument that said, all right, say you rule that Congress has a legitimate legislative purpose for assessing my information. Can you at least give us a say to appeal the case before giving the opposition carte blanche access to my financials with the ability to publish them at their own discretion? Unfortunately for Trump, the judge found, on a question of whether to grant a stay pending appeal, the president is subject to the same legal standard as any other litigant that does not prevail. Namazas has seven days to turn over the financial information pending an appeal, so I better start thinking about a whole new slate of subpoena puns. One final point that would just keep me up all night if I didn't clarify it. There is this whole other section of this case that seems like it runs counter to everything we've talked about so far. The president's lawyer argued to the judge last week that Congress is not allowed to conduct criminal investigations. It is only authorized to conduct investigations for legislative purposes. To that, the judge said today, it is simply not fathomable that a constitution that grants Congress the power to remove a president for reasons including criminal behavior would deny Congress the power to investigate him for unlawful conduct past or present, even without formally opening an impeachment inquiry. Now, in writing this entire episode, that little 26 second clip and a section I'm about to go over were gnawing at the back of my brain. With everything we've discussed, how could it be that, as the decision put it, twice in the last 50 years Congress has investigated a sitting president for alleged law violations before initiating impeachment proceedings? It did so in 1973 by establishing the Senate Select Committee on Presidential Campaign Activities better known as the Watergate Committee, and then did so again in 1995 by establishing the Special Committee to investigate Whitewater Development Corporation and related matters. It's stuff like this that's going to make me go completely bald by my next birthday. Okay, so how was Congress able to do this without saying, you know what, we're going to make a law out of this. Maybe this entire episode was a lie and I'm a fraud. Nope. In a huge sigh of relief moment, these were both triggered by the House announcing an impeachment inquiry, so they're directly related to the coming impeachment, and impeaching is a task of Congress, as I mentioned up at the top. Congress could launch an impeachment investigation right now, but until they do so, they're all just going to have to go on saying they're investigating under the guise of lawmaking. Or who knows, maybe we'll just get some really good laws out of this and it turns out we were all worried about nothing. Gosh, we're all so cynical nowadays. Thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news, remember to subscribe by clicking on this floating logo to the left of my head. Ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring and remember to give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, Thank you for watching.